I dedicated this video to Professor Nikolai Vechinkin who was born in Ukraine and worked in Kiev in the city of Fastov back before the 1917 revolution. He communicated with Lenin and Tsiolkovsky and God knows who else. He was the first director of the Central Research Institute of Mechanization and Energy of Forest Industry and helped Dekolenkov. Vechinkin took him into the institute where Dekolenkov headed the gasifier department. In this video, I will show Vechinkin's three patents on transport gasifiers. Two of them are devoted to dust-like fuel. While preparing this video, I did not even think what layer of information I would come across. Many of papers on gasifiers are one-offs. Sometimes Soviet engineers filed a few patents, and nothing else could be found in my book collection under their names. But here I happened to come across a real phenom, Professor Vechinkin. I had to dig a bit deeper while searching for information about his works and spend a few days making this video. I feel like I'm becoming a historian in the field of gasifiers. I think you will also be interested to see not just a bare schematic or a patent, but the story of the man who created them. A few words about Professor Vechinkin. He had a busy life. He was born in 1886, retired in 1955, and died five years later in 1960. You can imagine what this man experienced and saw during his life, World War I, Revolution, the so-called New Economic Policy, and five-year plans. He survived repressions, worked during World War II, survived it, lived in the USSR behind the Iron Curtain, but went on foreign trips to study Western world technologies. And he continued to invent more and more like a horn of plenty. I quickly counted about 100 works that came from the professor's pen. They are on the screen in front of you. From what I have seen, he was a practitioner and, unfortunately, wrote very little on gasifiers, just a few articles, three patents, and a brochure for radio. His work was extensive but related to gasifiers only a little. Vechinkin was not a young man at the dawn of the gasifier business in the USSR. His first patents were filed even before the 1917 revolution. He was already an energetic inventor at that time. Vechinkin was fascinated by transport. His first patent was filed in 1916 when he tried to create a wood and concrete roller. He invented a water and land wagon in 1924 and tracks for self-propelled wagons in 1926. In 1927, he files his first gasifier patent describing a device which resembled one of the European gasifiers very much. We will look at it a little later. In 1928, Vechinkin published two articles about gasifiers in Forest Industry magazine. They covered the result of his business trips abroad to exhibitions in France. About 30 companies were manufacturing gasifiers in Europe at that time. In 1931, in the eighth issue of the magazine, the inventor wrote about modern French gasifiers. All the professor's activity revolved around tractors and, later, amphibian tractors. How else? After all, all his activities in his position at the institute were related to the forest. I learned from these articles that rotary compressors were already used in gasifiers back then. I found a modern analog of such a rotary compressor that can be bought today. It has a very similar design. I had made a video review about it, but unfortunately, YouTube deleted it as the other 500 videos about gasifiers I made in 10 years of work on this subject. I found Professor's letter to his wife dated June 11, 1927, on the internet. Having visited the gasifier exhibition in Paris, Vechinkin admitted to her that he had learned more about gasifiers in one trip than in the previous two years of work. In another letter, on a postcard, 13 days later, he wrote that he had visited a factory founded by Frenchman Marius Berlier in France that mass-produced trucks. I should say for my part that France was the first country in history to establish truck mass production under the Berlier brand and the first to install gasifiers on them for the army. At that time, these gasifiers were called Berlier by the truck brand, not by the name of Imbert, the gasifier inventor. The French defense minister Maginot, the one who created the defense line, supervised the case. He hired Imbert to invent a firewood-powered gasifier for the French army. Maginot later reprimanded Imbert when the inventor tried to make gasifiers for another customer, Germany. 
when Imbert split from Maginot, creating his own reversed gasifiers at his expense, the devices began to be called Imbert gasifiers. On April 26, 1930, Vetchinkin wrote a joyful postcard to his wife telling her that he had been offered to test a charcoal gasifier on a 1.5-ton Ford truck. The inventor drove it 80 kilometers through the city of Compiègne, where an agreement to end World War I had been signed back in its days. By the way, Vetchinkin's son Anatoly was one of the best shortwave radio experts in the USSR. Nikolai Vetchinkin was also fascinated by a floating amphibious tractor. He worked hard to develop it. I found a rare photo showing a VL-1 model of a such tractor with a gasifier on board in Leningrad in 1941. The gasifier is on the backside, and the Rashig ring filter is closer to the viewer. Professor Vetchinkin stands closer to the amphibian. In this photo, he is younger and stands first on the left. Vetchinkin worked on gasifiers with Vosnesensky, a gasifier expert already known to my viewers. Several years ago, I presented tar-removing devices based on his work which led to a real hunt for Vosnesensky's book among my followers. Vetchinkin corresponded with a rocket scientist Tsiolkovsky who granted him a book with his autograph. Today this book is sold online. It bears an inscription from Tsiolkovsky, to the deeply respected Professor Nikolai Sergevich Vetchinkin from the grateful author. In the 1920s, Vetchinkin corresponded with Lenin, who asked him to write technological articles in newspapers. At that time, Vetchinkin was still just an engineer. In 1932, Vetchinkin wrote the text of a radio lecture about gasifiers, which was read by professional narrators. At about the same time Vetchinkin, being already the head of the institute, hired Dekalenkov, who headed a special gasifier laboratory. The lab was also responsible for helping forest bases build storage and drying facilities for woodchocks. Vetchinkin made a gasifier for half-meter-long firewood. It was difficult to cut wood into chunks at that time it was much easier to split logs. This gasifier was called NSV-3, apparently after Vetchinkin's first name, patronymic, and last name. This gasifier was designed for a three-ton AMO truck. These vehicles were produced at the factory seized from the Ryabushinsky brothers by the Bolsheviks. Later, the Soviet films about the AMO plant called the brothers Brigands Ryabushinsky according to the propaganda stereotype accepted at the time. In 1933, Vetchinkin, already being the first director of the Forest Industry Institute, wrote a foreword to Dekalenkov's brochure describing the Pioneer tractor with Dekalenkov's gasifier. In 1934, Vetchinkin and the first wave of gasifier enthusiasts participated in the motor rally which resulted in the adoption of Dekalenkov's gasifier for production. Namov, Karpov, Videnski, Mezin, and other first wave gasifier designers also participated in the motor rally. Let's look at Vetchinkin's three most curious patents. The first was granted on November 16, 1927 when he was just a design engineer, not a professor. The design is very similar to the air attractor. Apparently, Vetchinkin tried to make something of his own based on what he had seen at the French exhibition at that time. He was apparently fascinated by the gasifier shape allowing to load long logs. This saved a lot of time and effort in cutting them. It is essentially a downdraft gasifier with air heating. I won't dwell on it. On March 13, 1935, Vetchinkin filed a patent where he tried to solve the trending problem of dust-like fuel gasification. His design was quite elegant. He essentially proposed to feed dust-like fuel into Ribnikov's gasifier through the central nozzle together with air. The dust would burn up in the flow causing no further problems. That would reduce the coarse lumpy fuel consumption and make use of the dust. As I understand, an auger feeds dust into the pipeline through a flexible shaft rotated by a motor. The dust is poured into hopper one. The patent refers to coal dust. I don't know whether it was possible to use wood dust, e.g. sawdust, there. The dust flows through tube 7 and nozzle 11 sucked in by ejection. Vetchinkin could not cease his interest in wood dust because there was a lot of it in the forest bases where trees were cut down and Forest Industry Institute, headed by the inventor, was responsible for this process. A year later, on March 13, 1936, Vetchinkin together with Comrade I. Menshikov filed a patent on a wood-dust-only gasifier. 
This is a veritable vehicle vortex gasifier. Coal dust is fed into chamber 3 with the help of nozzle 2 through mixer 1. It is apparently charcoal dust. It moves in a spiral around the circle to the center, shown by arrows, and gasifies during its movement. The gasifier walls are lined with catalytically active ceramic mass. In order to increase the gas calorific value, steam is fed into the center of chamber 3. Water gas is obtained which is formed already in chamber 4 coupled with the first chamber 3. Then the gas goes to vaporizer 5 passing through pipe 6 and giving off heat. After that, the gas goes through pipe 7 to the vortex chamber and enters the filters through pipe 8. Apparently, there was a lot of unbriquetted dust left at the bases after charcoal production. But with the help of Vetchinkin's gasifier, it could be utilized in transport. That's all about Professor Vetchinkin. See you soon.